it's pretty low. Great. Liquid line is kind of warm. Suction line's coming back frozen. And it just shut off. I don't think it's happy. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Good morning, guys. So today we got three projects to do here. We've got an old walk-in freezer over there that the glass got cracked and now is frosting up. Got a suction line there that is broken insulation, so that's turned into a block of ice. And then there's water dripping off the back of the evaporator. It is hovering around 50 degrees. These are Chrysler Copen units. I have switched this over to temperature control from pressure controls. They are old, but I guarantee you, you will not see a True or any of the brands, Trosslin, Mantwok, whatever, last as long as these have. I mean, these things are built like with real metal, stainless steel and aluminum. Got a sensing bulb right there. Comes down, goes to the bottom. Got a clock down there, so we gotta check that. Then we have a walk in here. I think they shut this one off. This one's doing something, I'm not sure what. It just doesn't work. Got some real nice pecs there for drain line. Guess it works. Looks like you can see through there, so that's good. Not sure what the story is on this. This thing's laying backwards though. It's got a heck of a lean back. Okay, here's the walk in cooler. Right, so it just came on. I have a feeling it was probably in defrost. Let's go in here and see what exactly uh, our clock is at. Temperature control was changed in 19. Switched it to PLE oil sometime in 22. It's kind of a contraption. Side glass looks full unless it's empty. Liquid line is kind of warm. Suction line's coming back frozen. And just shut off. I don't think it's happy. Now what I did on this one here, and there's not a whole lot of options with this thing, relay in a box, something like that, is we got a contactor there that's high voltage, but it's inside of this container here. Fan's going the correct direction. I replaced that back in 18. So fan motor's 18, controller there's 19. Conversion in 22. Um, obviously, it's not the defrost clock, which I made that so it was actually serviceable. The last yin yangs made it very difficult. This one here is very easy to get into. I really don't want to replace that stupid thing, but I have a feeling that's what we're going to have to do. And I even made it so that you know it was isolated with that um, contactor there, so it take the brunt of the uh, amperage. I mean, it's lasted, and the clock here is 19, so yeah. The, um, so 20, 21, 22, 23, four years. So yeah. There's the clock. We're not in defrost. We're doing about 35 minute off cycle. Well, from what I'm seeing then, depending on what the thermostat is, which it looks like it's at 40, it's, it's been screwed with. Let's turn it down a little bit, see what it does. Appears to me, our issue is the thermostat. Fans have been running nonstop. Right at the 40 degree area, let's take it down to 35. See how that does. We'll let it run for a bit. We'll go grab a thermometer and see where we're at. Well, it just shut off, so we're gonna clamp our thermometer there. Right beside the sensing bulb, which is laying right above the um, evaporator fan. Let's see how it does now. May just let this roll for a bit and uh, go on to one of the other ones, but I kind of like doing one at a time unless I know what's exactly going on. Let's go over here so I can hear it running the um, refrigerant, but no evaporator fans. Uh, generally, the evaporator fans are on with the lights, which are off. So if we can find out where the lights are at, that might be why the fans ain't running, because I can hear it, like I said, running. 
They don't seem to do anything. I mean, you've got thermostat right there, solenoid on the other side of it. Don't see anything going in there to give me the power for my fans. There it is, goes up on the ceiling of this thing. Jump back over to this, because it just shut off. We're at 42, we're set for 35. Coming down a little bit yet. Got 45 up there, 41 here. May need to turn it down to 30, see how that comes in at. Uh, it could be just a little out of calibration, which wouldn't surprise me. These thermostats have been junk lately. I've had multiples go bad. I'd like it have digital ones, but we don't usually use those. Let's see how that does for us, see if it'll hold. Normally they go off of that thermometer, even though it's super, super old. They uh, use it quite often, so. Looks like we got us a wonderful little device going on there. Like I said, it goes up to there. It's gonna check the voltage, but conveniently didn't use the terminals that weren't there. Let's go ahead and check and see if we can use the light pin. If we get light pin, then we know that we probably are missing a neutral. We can always dig in deeper. Nope, no light pin. Somebody's got a breaker off somewhere. It's summertime and they just turned all this back on. So somebody's probably flipping breakers and not telling people where things are at. So that's probably all that's wrong with this one here. Just turn us down a little bit lower. We're currently at 25, which is all arbitrary numbers. It's all springs. So the breaker for this thing was over by the lunch line. I noticed when I started feeling the uh, liquid, the liquid's hot, but the evaporator was not cold. So it tells me that it may be an issue there. So now we've labeled it, because I'm telling you, people just don't realize how affordable markers are. Fans and panel H number 13. Just, it's just ignorant. People are so lazy. So our panel's way over here. That's, all this stuff's pretty old. Works. All these new schools are bought garbage. They're already like needing replacement stuff already in 10 years. All these geothermals, all this junk they put in because it's more efficient. Just had nothing but problems with them. Yeah, I'm going to get on the uh, roof. All right, so we got that there made labeled off. So bounce back over to this thing. So now we're at 32, which is fine as long as it shuts off here. And then we can cycle up and on and off, up and on and off. You can tap 32, but you know, as long as it cycles up to 38 or whatever, it won't ever freeze the product. Got a dead band there. That's how the um, pressure control systems worked is they basically went down as low as they could, but then they cycled all the way up and cut in at 38, 39 degrees, which was the pressure temperature relationship there, the saturated temperature. I think it's already dropped down below 40. Don't know if we can calibrate this. Yep. It's got a little calibration knob there. Just shut off at 29.9, actually 30. So I'll let this set for a bit and we'll see what it comes in at. So, all right, so just turned on about 34. That's gonna freeze. So let's turn this up just a little bit. Yeah, I could replace it, but it'll just go out again. It's about 25. Let's see how that does. Good old white slippery rough. So this is the cooler. That over there is the freezer. Wow, somebody actually wrote in there with a marker. It had five pounds of 404A on it. Look at that. It looks like it's got bubbles. It's pretty low. Great. Let's pull the top off this thing and start looking for a leak. Hypercore technology. Micro channel. Did somebody clean it with a crazy cleaner of some sort? Cause it's leak, let's find out. Clock's typical, hard to turn but it turns. They don't have it equally spaced out because you know the power is going to get turned off like it's just done now. All right, clock's never going to be right because they're going to constantly turn them off and stuff. Look at that, looks like a little bit of oil there. No reason for any oil to be there. 
Let's go grab the detector and see what we got. Let's double check this one cap here. There's a little... Yep, every freaking time, they're never tight. And that's either oil in the bottom there. This has a tendency to leak. Inficon Stratus, let's see what you can do today. Let's go down here to this cap that I didn't really tighten up. Look at that. Them junk valves. I'm not really sure why they do it. If the compressor goes bad, are you really gonna reuse the refrigerant? I mean, come on, really? I know you can isolate it, but it's like, what's the point? It's one more valve you gotta pay for. It's one more valve that you gotta worry about leaking. That's under super. Let's go to PPM. PPM says we're getting up there to the three, 400s, 500s. And that's without it running. That's with it static. Static, static, whatever. All right, so there's that one. That one's probably your majority. Let's check our capillary goodies here. We'll pull that cover off and get into the bellows. I like always going to the back side that way. It's a little cleaner usually. And it usually seems to always leak somewhere along the edge corners of the coil here. So let's get in that corner there. It can leak anywhere, but that's the most prominent. And usually if it's a bad leak, you're gonna pick it up and even in the cover here. A little bit of a breeze out here, but we're down in those bellows. Not getting anything on super. I think we're fine on that. Sometimes you get guys blow their hoses off in there. I had a little bit of a hit when I came in the door. The hand's not on there, that's not good, is it? Maybe better off to go to the PPM mode, see what we're getting. You gotta watch that little button that vents out the air on the back. You block it, it'll go off. It's not good. Fans are running. We have something over here by the freezer. I do got a little bit of insulation I can cr cut and put on that. Let's go over here. See if we can pick up anything. They had a pretty full sight glass on this thing. Not a lot going on. Okay, detect three. Just as sensitive, if not more, sometimes. Hasn't gone off yet. Got the fan turned off so we can try to scan the solenoid. I did turn it off while it was running. That way it would uh, leave refrigerant on both sides of the coil. I think we're good on that. Let's go ahead and recharge it and get it going. And back over to this thing, since we're jumping around. Holding somewhere in the 37 mark there, 34 here. Has been shutting off about 33, coming on about 37. I tweaked it up maybe a degree of that. I think we've got this one tweaked out. I put it right on the cover, set it at like 27 degrees. I know the guy here pretty good and He's pretty, pretty knowledgeable. He used to be our sales guy at my last place I worked at. So, I mean, it's one of them things where if it's, you know, just out of calibration, but is equally staying within a certain set range of on and off, just adjust it, mark it, move on, instead of buying another thermostat. So, little bugs are everywhere. Little, these things are getting contactors all the time on air conditioner. Here it is up on top of a roof. How'd you get all the way up here? Gotta put the electrical right through the freaking area there. Yeah, we were pretty low, but it hasn't ran all summer. First time I've worked on this one, I usually do all the work here. Got talking to maintenance guy, add a little too much refrigerant, which my other one over there was low anyhow. So I just used my hose and ejected the rest of the extra into the, this unit over here, which as we're checking it out, the side glass is full now, but the condenser coil was completely dirty. Gonna wash it out real quick. It's a micro channel, so usually these clean up pretty simple. 
you can tell it's gotten washed by the uh, rainwater, but it's not been getting it through the center of the coil. So we'll go ahead and get that thing all sprayed off. That way it can actually breathe. That'll also allow us to check that charge, make sure to see if it flashes off. These usually don't take a lot to get them clean. There really ain't much reason to get it with a chemical cleaner on these anyway. You can about shove it right on through, pretty thin. They've got coil cleaners out there that are supposedly rated for it. I don't trust it. I don't want to be the one that uh, finds out that it didn't work very good. And then uh, they want to blame you for their coil leaking. Not my uh, thought of having a good time. Mainly it was just dust, I think, but it was still was enough to block the air. Otherwise, I'd be really working these coils in the center. Plus, this will allow us to see if the uh, headmaster control is working properly. If we're not fully charged yet, it'll start flashing off. So let's go over here and take a look here. Yep, flashing a little bit. So you can see we're starting to get some light through there. So we can use a little more in there. Not able to easily tell how much I added to it, but all I know is that it was flashing just a little bit, not bad. And we'll see if we're still flashing or not. I mean, this ain't gonna be the perfect winter charge, but it's gonna be a lot better than what it would be here on a uh, warm day like we've got today. So I got a ball valve right there. Able to start and stop it right there. That one over there was pretty low. I put six pounds in, it holds five, so my guesstimation will end up being about maybe a pound or two into this one. They own both pieces of equipment, so there's nothing wrong with switching it around, legally, EPA-wise. This one here is nice and clean now, and funny enough, it actually shut off for the first time. So it was low on charge and probably had high head pressure, so it just ran, ran, ran. Side glass was full until I cleaned it, and now it's staying clean. So we're going to make a search for a little leak on that one. Um, just got to finish washing out that coil out over there, and then insulate the suction line. I think we might be all right by then. The cooler downstairs is doing fine. All right, got that one cleaned out. Wasn't near as bad as the other one. Still did all under five gallons of water, and uh, rinsed her all out. So let's see where we're at on this thing. We're gonna do a pump down, see where our receiver's at since we uh, didn't do it the way I wanted to do it, which is take her full and then add 10, 15% to it. Yeah, it took a little too much out. But what I did is I bled the hose all the way to the end there, got liquid all out of it, pulled off the high side, which is liquid. So we charge it in liquid form and wait before somebody flips out. Haven't had to do it very often, but it, uh, at that point, I didn't want to have to just blow it back into a uh, recovery tank and just, uh, you know, have to write it off. So I was able to make do with it. All right, so I went down there and used my test vial from Inficon. It, it's working. So let's see if we can pick anything up with it running at 242 pounds ahead. Even though that fan's blowing on it, usually it'll catch it there's anything there. I tightened it up pretty good and that's brass cap. Should be fine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and check that other one over there. We'll go ahead and put this one back together. 25 degree suction, 101 condensing temp. Looking uh, decent there. There is a crap load of oil in here. I don't think that's just dirt. Look at that. Same thing. It's definitely going off there. Real surprise and that's where all the oil's at. I just checked the heat tape downstairs and replaced some of the insulation. As you can see, this insulation is pretty old. It's saturated down there, and when it gets saturated with water, uh, it's not going to insulate at all. And it's just going to transfer the cold right out to the outside, and it's going to cause you issues. So I went ahead and chopped off that, glued it together, and rolled it around the U-bend trap down there. I think when this thing's running high head pressure and stuff like that from dirty coil, that's when it uh, leaks out the worst. And obviously it wasn't like dead bone dry or anything like that. It's not a huge leak, but definitely ain't good to have any leak. Not a lot of pressure on it right now. I always like check the solenoid here. The screw together types tend to leak a little bit. Check these caps out here too. This one here, I'm gonna have to get some more insulation for on up in the, between the ceiling. Like I said, heat tape's working and stuff like that. I think it was low on charge. It's causing a lot of my issues with running a lot nonstop. But the biggest thing was the ice balls, what he was complaining about. And a little bit of the ice downstairs. I'm going to blow out the trap, and then we should be good. You can see it right there on the cap. 
they got a junk basic cap there and I bet you the either the seals out of it and then somebody cranked it down tight and it's got a rubber seal in there we're gonna put a brass cap on that thing and you figure uh, it's about 90 degrees 85 degrees somewhere in that ballpark out here right now that's all the more pressure it would have had so when it's running obviously that discharge gas is going to be coming through there a lot hotter a lot higher pressure and i don't think they've had problems too much with this it wasn't like i said completely empty that insulation being saturated is the other issue walking cooler is dropping in temp it's just about there the box uh, over here with the thermostat issue it's good to go no problems there it's been holding temperature right in the mid 30s 35 to 38 area i think that's going to wrap this one up now the way I checked that was with this Top Don uh, thermal imaging camera here. This is something I've been trying out here recently. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, it's pretty moderately priced. Uh, it's a little bigger than some of the other ones out there. It's, it's like one of the big thick phones, about twice the thickness of a, a regular phone. But it's uh, it has a pretty good sized display on it. It's Android based. Boots up fairly decent speed wise. Yeah, the resolution is still higher than what my FLIR was that I had prior to and uh, resolution for speed is pretty quick. So you go into this app here, which there's other apps and things like that, but the focus point here is the thermal imager, thermal imaging, come into here. Oops. All right, so we're able to come in here and we're able to see, like I said, whether or not that heat tape's working. So you can see it right there, working plain as day. Just like, it's just as fast as my other one I've got. It's, I think, better than my FLIR. Um, you can pick these up on Amazon. You can see plain as day right there, that heat tape is working. Looks like it's uh, running 42 degrees there on that. You can see it coming across through there and down the wall. So the thing I like about this one here is the frame rate. So most of them are not that fast. I mean, that frame rate is 25 frames per second. My FLIR was not even close to that. Now, coming up here, you can see everything seems to be pretty nice as far as infiltration. You can see the liquid line going across. I'm not seeing any crazy infiltration in the building. You can see a spot right there, but that's in a corner, not a real surprise. And that's reflectiveness, so you're gonna have that no matter what. You'll be able to see my reflection right there, see it? That's normally gonna watch out for shiny surfaces. Uh, I'm gonna have them call a window place for that. It's, this door should add heat tape of some sort, but I don't think they had it back then. I don't know, this door is probably older than me. Like I said, um, it seems to be working pretty good. And, uh, but that's a look there at the top, Don. Uh, it's got a few different things on there, it's pretty cool. Hit it up, swipe up. You've got your temperature monitoring. Always a glare no matter what you do. Personal information, gallery, so you can go into gallery. So there's the heat tape and stuff. You can zoom in on it. Real simple, easy, boom, boom, boom. Uh, this does have uh, Wi-Fi and uh, pretty much all the same features my other ones have got. And like I said, it's a little cheaper. So I'll put a link for this down in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. It does regular pictures and stuff. It is a little thick. It's about the, th uh, about the size of my uh, Ultra 21. Uh, about twice the thickness though. It's uh, it's kind of thick. It's got a USB-C on the side of it. It's got two cameras here. It can do multiple different colors. It's got speaker, video player. So you could actually play videos just like you would on your phone. It's got internet on it, calculator, music, sound recorder, uh, regular camera. So here's regular camera. That's actually a pretty decent camera uh, compared to some of them that I've seen. They're using that to do the double image up there. You're able to take regular pictures plus your thermal imaging camera pictures, but check it out guys if you're interested in it. Like I said though, I'm gonna replace that piece going up right about where you can see that uh, folded uh, Armaflex is. Uh, I got this, like I said, just ran it through there and it uh, held together pretty good. And uh, we'll come back and get that later. Well, I'm just gonna wrap this one up guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's kinda all scatterbrained and all over the place, but that's sometimes how it goes. They actually wanted me to check two or three other uh, coolers and freezers, but we just don't have time to do it today. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Until next time, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Later.